Welcome to Louisiana Business Spotlight. I'm Jeff Cruer. We have a great program lined up for you today. We're going to be talking to a representative of a brand new business that's opened up right here in Kenner and also talking to a crime fighter, a community activist who's got some important tips as far as public safety for all of us here in the New Orleans area. But let's start with some of the top news stories we're following right here on Louisiana Business Spotlight. Insurance Commissioner Jim Donilon said draconian rate increases for flood insurance provided by the federal government will be devastating to homeowners and businesses. He's urging Congress to postpone changes passed last year for at least another year. The Bigger Waters, which is the Flood Insurance Reform Act, threatens to devastate our economy and, according to Donilon, make thousands of properties valueless. Now, Louisiana residents are going to be looking for health care coverage soon through these new insurance marketplaces that are set up by the federal government. But they're not going to have many options here in Louisiana. Now, this thing just started October the 1st. Now, residents are going to have the option to enroll in insurance plans offered through what are called exchanges. Unfortunately, so far, only Blue Cross and Blue Shield will be ready to offer insurance to anyone living in any of the Louisiana zip codes. BP has asked a federal judge in Louisiana to suspend payment of private claims stemming from the Deepwater Horizon oil spill until new anti-fraud measures are implemented in the claims process. Now, the request marks the third time that BP has asked U.S. District Judge Carl Barbier to suspend the multi-billion dollar claims payment program, but so far, Barbier has refused to do so. And finally, the Gulf of Mexico shrimp processors, their nearly year-long case seeking relief against various foreign shrimp, uh, shrimp imports, that died when the U.S. International Trade Commission struck down the five pending shrimp subsidy cases against the countries of China, Ecuador, India, Malaysia, and Vietnam. The commission voted four to two that Gulf shrimpers were not injured by these foreign imports, and thus duties would not be imposed. All right, joining us next is going to be Nadra Enzi. His name is Captain Black, and he's with the Home Defense Foundation of New Orleans. That's next right here on Louisiana Business Spotlight. Welcome back to Louisiana Business Spotlight. Very pleased to have with us someone that I've interviewed uh, many times in many different forums and very pleased to have him with us today. His name is Nadra Enzi. He goes by the nickname Captain Black. He's a crime fighter, community activist. And he's got a new initiative, the Home Defense Foundation. We'll find out all about it. Captain, welcome. How you doing? Jeff, thank you for having me. Tell our viewers a little bit about uh, what the Home Defense Foundation is. Why did uh, you start this initiative? Well, as one of our board members, Jeff, you know that the Home Defense Foundation focuses on self-defense and, like the name implies, protection of our families and our property. And that is everything from getting more lighting for your particular residence or business mm -hmm. and even including firearm safety training. But another issue that we really focus on is trying to make the law much more homeowner and business owner friendly in case you have to defend yourself. Right now, do you find that the law is not friendly to property owners and business owners? In Louisiana, you have a very interesting statute. It's 1420. Mm -hmm. And basically, it is the justifiable, justifiable homicide statute, but we call it the home defense statute, so that people can kind of fix it a little more firmly in their minds. If an intruder attempts to attack you, then you defend yourself with a firearm. If the intruder dies, then you're fine, you'll be exonerated. If the intruder lives, then you have not only the uh, potential of criminal prosecution, but of course, civil penalties can be put upon you. And that seems very odd. Well, uh, and that's just uh, some kind of a quirk in the law? Well, the way I'm, I'm assuming, the way the legislature looked at it, they wanted to try to make sure that there were remedies in place if a person survived, and of course, with a, someone surviving, now you have a witness. So mm -hmm. I guess they want to provide penalties in case 
the shooting wasn't ruled justified as opposed to a situation where there's only one person left to tell the story, and that would be the homeowner or the business owner. And a related concern we have is that the definition of dwelling or place of business, you know, we think that that may be a little vague. What it right now is in the law and what do you mm -hmm. want it to If someone to? is literally caught trying to breach your property, mm -hmm. that's considered your dwelling. Mm -hmm. We think that the surrounding yardage, many of our homes have townhouse, excuse mm -hmm. me, not townhouses, but courtyards. Mm -hmm. We think that needs to be included as part of your property because the distance between, for, for instance, a front door and a parked vehicle may be five feet. So you're talking about a driveway, Certainly. a yard, mm -hmm. that should be part of, quote, a dwelling. Yes, I think we really need to consider expanding mm -hmm. that definition and also in the instance of a place of business. So these are some initiatives that you're going to be leading uh, in mm -hmm. the next uh, legislative session? That's correct. We are very fortunate to have um, some people in Baton Rouge who are very concerned about the same issues. And as elected representatives, they want to team with us to try to craft legislation that's in the best interest of all Louisianans. Now, you've got a website uh, mm -hmm. for the group. It's hdfnola.org, hdfnola but also one that's really specifically tailored toward this uh, bill, mm -hmm. and that's uh, fix1420.org, correct? That's correct. Fix1420 gives you a chance to look at the present law and also to look at the recommended language that we want to insert. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we anticipate spirited debate about this, but we are concerned about homeowners. We are concerned about business owners. And let's talk about business, because that's what we're all about here. Mm -hmm. How does this relate to business? One of the unexpected costs of running a business is security. Mm -hmm. Not just physical security, locks, mm -hmm. alarm systems, but now in our information economy, you have to be responsible for people's proprietary data on your cash transaction system, well, excuse me, on your electronic transaction systems. So fraud has become even more a question for business owners to address. We have forgery. You know, it's very easy now for people to create counterfeit bills. We have a couple of holiday seasons coming up and usually there's an influx of counterfeit money that business owners have to be on the lookout for. Scams, you know, in the wake of natural disasters, which is reason, of course, has experienced, it's very easy for somebody to slap a logo on the side of his vehicle mm. and pass himself off as a contractor. Mm. And these are all costs that businesses endure, and in turn, they have to transfer that cost to the consumer. What is going to happen to our business investments if we don't get a handle on this crime problem? They will go elsewhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, the bottom line is business people are not looking to sink their fortunes into a battlefield. And everyone from chambers of commerce, small business chambers of commerce, independent mom and pop operators know that if a city is perceived as being too unsafe, then your client base, your customers, your suppliers, everybody mm -hmm. will choose what they consider at least to be safer venues. For our business leaders out there, small business owners, others who are involved in the community, um, you're calling for them to get off the fence, get involved. Mm -hmm. uh, what are you calling for them to do? Realize that the bottom line includes making sure that you know not just your law enforcement authorities, but your, your legislative officials mm -hmm. and advocates like the Home Defense Foundation. Mm -hmm. We need to team up. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure that we have not just safer communities in the uh, public safety definition, but also safer communities that in turn are more business friendly, that will let business owners reap far more profit. Because again, unsafe environments are a disincentive for business and drives both business professionals and clientele elsewhere. So businesses, if they get involved in this effort, is this going to be going to your salary, the board member's salary? Is this going to be going to big, <laughs> uh, big money for people in the organization? Let me make a dramatic pause. <laughs> the Home Defense Foundation mm -hmm. board members and I as coordinator mm -hmm. get paid nothing. Mm -hmm. Even rich guys like you who are on our board, mm -hmm. we do not get a cent. We do this out of our commitment to our community. Now, I think that's admirable. That's why people that are involved are in there for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. So there's no contracts going to nope. you know, friends of the organization or other kinds nope. of 
questionable things that we see sometimes mm -hmm. in Louisiana. And a, lot of, <laughs> and a lot of business people, of course, have a very fine eye on making sure nobody's trying to involve them in shenanigans. And I understand that. That's, that's part and parcel of what a business person does. He weighs risk and reward mm -hmm. in every proposition that crosses his desk. So you're involved in training folks mm -hmm. in the use of pepper spray, uh, training folks in putting up lighting, mm -hmm. even firearm safety if they want that, advocating changes in the law that are going to make it uh, a safer environment mm -hmm. for homeowners, for business owners. Uh, there's also some initiatives that you have concerning how to house criminals, right? Certainly. Talk we have something called a shooter's prison. Mm -hmm. And again, from a business perspective, we're being told that society can ill afford multi-million dollar prisons. As you know, Orleans Parish has an addition to the parish prison underway. We say, let us look at a low-cost alternative specifically designed to house persons who are repeat offenders using firearms and other dangerous weapons, cost-effective, low-cost alternatives, and taking your most dangerous offenders and removing them from the general population and placing them in a no-frills, low-cost environment that not only helps secure society, but also doesn't bankrupt us in the process. Because, Captain, we always hear from our elected officials that we don't have the money to house all of the prisoners. Mm -hmm. that there's always a, a conflict. We need either higher taxes or more prison space. Sometimes they even let people go because True. of overcrowding. True. So this addresses all those issues? Mm -hmm. We have to look at this, again, from a business perspective. How do you provide public safety, in this instance, corrections, without bankrupting your community and I think that a real search for cheaper materials and much more tightly regulated contracting and bids so that a lot of the cost overruns or milking the contract that government watchdogs talk about does not occur so that we really do have low-cost effective prisons for our shooters and other persons who use violence and dangerous weapons in the commission of their crimes. Here's what I've found, and, and you're an activist, you're mm -hmm. out there on the streets, you see this all the time. It seems like we don't have enough police officers and we have too many criminals. Exactly. I mean, and how did that equation occur? And uh, is the shooter's prison a solution for that? It's part of it, but this goes toward leadership. Now in Orleans Parish, they're in the city of New Orleans, there is a real crisis of confidence in the ranks of the police department. You know, it's been rocked by some international scandals. We now have the Justice Department and a police monitor impaneled. Mm -hmm. I recently found out from some of my police friends that they have been uh, stripped of their pepper spray. And pepper spray, as you know, is a non-lethal weapon that officers can use to try to force someone to comply with lawful orders. So now they don't have their pepper spray. They have a federal watchdog monitor looking over their shoulders. And consequently, a number of officers are leaving NOPD and going to other jurisdictions. So if the numbers continue to fall, mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna be seeing crime problem continuing to be bad in Orleans, but also it's gonna spill out in True. Jefferson surrounding parishes. So- Because crime some, is mobile. Right. And once the bones of New Orleans have been picked dry, then inevitably people have to seek other territories, and of course means surrounding parishes. From what I can tell from my research, the response time in Orleans has averaged up to like 16 minutes if you mm -hmm. call 911. I know it's a lot less here in Jefferson, but in that time before the police get there, your chances certainly are better if you know how to defend yourself, correct? If you know how to defend yourself and if the state law is on your side. You see, we're entering into an era where there are less resources, there are less officers. So by default, homeowners and business owners are going to have to assume more responsibility for their protection, whether that's creating self-taxing security districts like we have in New Orleans where business owners and residential owners get together, mm -hmm. impose a tax, and out of that fund, hire either off-duty police or private security companies to patrol their particular areas or solutions like the, the shooter's prison or 
fix1420.org, like we spoke about earlier. So you're, you're offering solutions in, in all kinds of different areas. One, training business owners, mm -hmm. homeowners, uh, techniques that they can employ Certainly. to improve their chances. Mm -hmm. And then change the law, give us some future security maybe in a new style of prisons. Mm -hmm. What's your goal and the organization's goal to try to influence legislators in changing all of this so that we can you know, have a better environment for our business owners and homeowners? Giving them a friendly reminder that we're voters, mm -hmm. that we're homeowners, that we're business owners, and we are willing to meet them halfway to craft legislation that enhances our rights to defend our families and to defend our enterprises. And again, this isn't complaining, it's saying let's roll up our sleeves together and also let's support our embattled police departments because when a business owner or homeowner dials 911, guess what? It's the officer who responds. He is your first line of service right. in these and scenarios. And can't forget that they, they're putting their lives on the line yes, on a daily are. basis for, for the public. Yes, and, they are. Uh, they're not getting paid enough. They're doing it under tough conditions. Mm -hmm. And we certainly should thank our first responders. Final words, uh, Captain, to our viewers about how uh, you'd like to see them engaged you can go to hdfnola.org that's mm -hmm. the home defense foundation where you'll be able to find out about our fix 1420 initiative and also our shooters prison get involved with depending on where you are like here in jefferson parish you have a very good sheriff's office get involved with police and community councils there get involved with your chamber of commerce let people know that as a homeowner and particularly as a business owner mm -hmm. you include public safety as part of your bottom line all right, Captain Black, thanks for joining us. My Keep pleasure. Keep up the good work. we got a lot to do here in our community. All right, when we come back, we'll talk about a new business right here in Kenner that's opening up. That's next on Louisiana Business Spotlight. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Very pleased to have with us someone who's involved in a brand new business that's starting right here in Kenner. Very pleased to introduce Gary Folks, who's with Airtight Spray Foam. And uh, Gary, welcome. How you doing? Just fine. Thanks for joining us. Uh, tell our viewers a little bit about your background. Well, uh, I've, I've got about 30 years in, in sales. Uh, I'm local, and uh, this is I'm with my son with a spray foam business. So this is the first time you've really been in the spray foam business. You've done other types of sales. Yes. What sort of industries have you been involved uh, in sales with? Home improvement. Home improvement? Yes. So you know the area pretty well. You've been working this area for a long time, right? Many years. What's your feeling about the business climate here? Do you think the economy's doing well? You think it's doing poorly? What's your, uh, I think what's your we're feeling? Doing, I think we're doing very well here. Mm -hmm. uh, the spray foam insulation is uh, something that's really coming in strong. Uh, it seems like I hear a lot about spray foam insulation all yeah. over the place. Well, it's a growth industry? Absolutely. And since Katrina, uh, with all the knockdowns and people renovating, and uh, now is the time. If you have your walls open, uh, you need to spray foam it. because. So your position with the company is sales. You're going out there talking to businesses and, and homeowners, so it can it can help businesses and homeowners. Anybody Abs who absolutely. needs help with their energy bills, right? Absolutely, you can save as much as uh, I want to say sixty percent. You know, wow. if you can get the attics done, the the walls, uh, the subfloors, if you're underneath the house, and that's a lot of money. In your preparation for your position, you went through a lot of training. You learned about uh, what the product is. Uh, you learned about you know what the advantages are. Tell our viewers a little bit about what is what is spray foam exactly. Well, it's uh, it's a cellular uh, plastic insulation. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a, a sprayer that mixes a couple of chemicals when you pull that trigger, and it's sprayed on the wall, and it expands. It's a, it's a specific type of machine that has to actually spray this foam, right? Yes. I mean, you can't just use like a you know, a hair dryer and do it, right? right? Uh, you, you go out with a big rig that's on the job site uh -huh. and uh, these big drums of chemical and uh, they're hooked up to the sprayers and uh, so they come So this is like together. this machine that's used, you just can't find it anywhere, right? No, I mean, it's no. a pretty extensive and expensive piece of machinery? 
Absolutely. We, we went outside uh, of Atlanta and picked up the rig and and actually there were three of us that were certified at the factory. Uh, Where's the we factory, to, Gary? Uh, Greensville, uh, Georgia. Okay. And uh, we went to the factory there, picked it up, went to some classes there and, mm -hmm. and actually even sprayed there. And so the we, good thing is if a homeowner actually or business owner calls your company and your team goes out there, you're going to be like, you're not just somebody off the street. You're someone who's been trained. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, even the salesman's been factor trained. Yeah, and that's a good thing. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about um, your experience here in Canada. You guys are a new company, right? Yes. Tell us a little bit about where we can find you uh, in the city. We're off of, uh, it's 901 24th Street mm -hmm. in, in Kenner. And uh, Kenner's been very easy to work with. Would you uh, say, uh, Gary, that Kenner's sort of a, a pro-business uh, city? I mean, it's been easy to set up shop here and to do business? Absolutely. Very workable. It, it's been, uh, everything's went very smooth. Now, the, the company, your, your son is involved. You also have others doing sales and doing installations. So you're sort of a startup company, right? Yeah, absolutely. But your plans are to? To keep growing. Yeah. I, I mean, as technology changes, uh, the industry with the codes are changing. Mm -hmm. uh, your new construction, uh, you know, the foam is, is the way to go. And that's now. a good point, because um, insulation has changed a lot over the years. I mean, uh, so I think it's good for people to know what the advances are so they can save more money. I mean, it's not going to be something that is stagnant. It's going to be improving over time, right? Well, absolutely. And if you know that, you know, let's just say an average bill, 300 and something dollars, mm -hmm. if you can cut 30, 40 percent off of that bill, uh, mm -hmm. you can't afford not to do it. So you have the savings, and that's that's and that's pretty much across the board, right? Yeah. Everybody's going to save some. Yeah. On and on these new construction jobs, I've sat down and I've figured out the pricing. Uh, mm -hmm. It may take you seven or eight years if you're building a new home to to get your money back. Mm -hmm. But if you don't do it, mm -hmm. uh, it it's going to cost you a money lot of money. Money literally be flying out the window, right? Absolutely. Uh, it's also a healthier environment with this uh, insulation, isn't yes, it? Yes, it's cleaner. Mm -hmm. I mean, the walls are sprayed, the house, you don't have uh, dust coming down from certain So people kinds. with uh, breathing conditions, asthma, et cetera, they might want to have uh, this insulation just for their health. Yes, and, and not only that, we're in a hurricane-prone area. Mm -hmm. When you spray this foam in your attics and you have six inches up there in your rafters, mm -hmm. the strength from this is uh, it really... Uh, helps the the structural part of the house. So, Talk a little bit about some of the viewers out there might have small houses, some might have big houses, small businesses, big businesses. Is there a size requirement? I mean, do you no, have? No, there's no job too big, too mm -hmm. small. Uh, we have elevation companies out there raising these houses. Uh, we're spraying foam underneath them as they elevate them, bringing them up. Uh, mm -hmm. So there's no job too small. Mm -hmm too big. I would think Louisiana would be a great place for this type of a business because of, you know, our soaring energy costs here. I mean, certainly all the people uh, need to have AC during the uh, summer and sometimes you run in that AC nine months, I mean, with the hot weather that we have. So I would I, think this would be something people would want to look into. Absolutely. I know in my own home, uh, for instance, last month, it was a little better than $100, the electric bill. But the surcharge was like sixty dollars. Wow. Uh, so if you have the foam and you've insulated your right. house and done the things that you can do, right. it's going to really benefit you in the long run. All right, our viewers out there who might be interested uh, to get more information, I know uh, we've got your phone number here nine nine four nine seven three four that we'll put up there. Also, you've got a website so they can contact you uh, either way, right? Yeah, that's right. All right. Well, Gary, listen, I uh, appreciate you joining us. Uh, congratulations on uh, opening up uh, your new business and uh, welcome to Kenner and uh, look forward to great success for you. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks okay. for being with us. All right. Next up is our top news stories here that we're following, our good news stories right here on Louisiana Business Spotlight. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Now it's time for some good news in our local business world. Louisiana is going to receive $1 million from the federal government 
That's going to help fund a plan aimed at increasing foreign investment and international commerce in the state. And that's the uh, announcement from the U.S. Department of Commerce. Now, the grant is going to go a long way toward funding the state's first master plan for international commerce. It's also going to be used for marketing and technical assistance. Jefferson Parish is a, quote, hidden gem for small investors looking to break into single family homes. And that's uh, according to Realty Track and Rent Range. They also said Jefferson Parish is a great parish for offering a strong return on investments, and there's little competition. Now, these uh, housing firms released this information, listing Jefferson Parish high among all the suburban parishes in the country. In fact, Jefferson Parish was in the top 25 rental areas in the U.S., offering opportunities for individuals and small institution investors. And the Army Corps of Engineers has decided to use a combination of fabric mats and grass to armor most earthen hurricane levees on both sides of the river. And that's what a senior Corps official is now confirming. The armoring is going to be completed by using $14.6 billion. It's been appropriated by Congress to rebuild all the levees and improve drainage in the entire New Orleans region. Now, according to the Corps, there will be enough funds to complete the project, even though the more expensive fabric mat material will be used, and that will be better armoring, something we all definitely want. All right, if you have any ideas or comments about topics or potential guests, please contact me at jcruer at gmail.com. I look forward to your input, and thanks so much for joining us. I'm Jeff Cruer, and I'll see you next time for another edition of Louisiana Business Spotlight. Thank you.